I love it, it's beautiful here. It's perfect temperature, perfect weather, just not too many people around, so it's really nice. Beautiful mountains with snow on top and just really relaxing European nice country. People. Nice people, yeah. And about the food, you try some burek? Oh yeah, the food's really good, yeah. When you are here in the city of Skopje, you must visit a couple of things. Start from the old railway station or from the fortress. You must passing through Old Bazaar, because actually Old Bazaar is a symbol of the city of symbol. Skopje. You must passing through Stone Bridge and passing through River of Vardar, coming to the main center. Actually, you can see the difference. Only 300 meters from the old town of Skopje, you can see the Old Bazaar and you're coming to the main square and you see a literally new modern city of Skopje. You must to visit the Memorial House of Mother Teresa and you must definitely you must see the old railway station and the clock, five o'clock and 17 minutes, because actually that's the symbol of the city. The clock show us the time when was the earthquake, five o'clock and the 17 minutes. Information says that more than 90% of the city was completely destroyed. After that, we start with the reparations. What would you say is the spirit of the city? dynamic place who live uh, literally 24 hours and combination between old traditional and literally new modern one. The blend of the past and the present? Of course, yes. In very the, dynamic? Very dynamic, of course, yes. And cheerful. I would say yes, it is. people here are cheerful and, 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 and as we see, yeah? Yeah. So it proves the case. With a lot of sense of humor. This is one of the reasons why you should come to Skopje. Kebabs Kebab. or Cevapcici. Very nice food, especially for our friend vegetarian. <laughs> With your hand, no? Mm. Don't use your hand. Mm. 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 I have to take another one immediately. <laughs> Baked beans. Gravče. It's different to extend to what I've used eating the same dish in Serbia, but this is one of the best things about the Balkans and the Danube region in general, because you eat the, the, the known food, but the flavor is different. So it's basically exploring the same thing in various tastes and, and preparations. So, yeah, I'm happy. In Bosnia and uh, in Macedonia, you don't get the pepper, you have the paprika. Very nice. And I like the onions. It's a big portion of onions. Stobi is the most famous archaeological site in Macedonia, one of the most famous archaeological sites from the Roman period in the Balkans. It has a very long history of archaeological activity. It goes back to 150 years. So now you have more than 20 monuments that you can see here at Stobi from the Roman and the late Roman period. And what we're looking at right now where we're standing is the magnificent theater of, of Stobi. So this is a, a grand building which served for as an entertainment venue for the population of Stobi which at this period was around three to forty thousand people. So usually what, what, what was performed here were theater plays but also this theater had special architectural features which enable it to accommodate gladiator fights and animal fights as well. So Stobi does not have an amphitheater but the theater was used as a theater and an amphitheater at the same place. At one show or games there could have been around 7,000 people who would sit at the seats at the theater. An interesting thing when we're speaking about the gladiators and what took place in the theater is that here at Stobi we have a virtual reality experience so every visitor here can schedule his virtual reality experience where with VR goggles He'll be seated at the theater in some of these seats and you'll have the whole theater reconstructed so you can turn left right see the audience here and then you'll have you have the pleasure to see a gladiator fight in the middle of the orchestra it's not bloody it's just more like sportsmanship <laughs> like wrestlers <laughs> okay. so it was the largest uh, the largest city in the north of the province Macedonia and later in the fourth fifth century it became the capital of the newly formed province Macedonia Secunda and at the same time, in the early 4th century, in the first half of the 4th century, it became a bishop seat at the dawn of early Christianity. It's not just about Rome and what happened in the Italian peninsula, but the Roman Empire was 
exactly. all over yeah. Europe and, and North Africa and, and West or Asia Minor. So uh, studying all these small cities can give us the idea of how people lived in this city. So it wasn't all the rich people living in Rome, but there were rich people in rich cities outside Rome as well. This here are the remains of the oldest Christian church in Macedonia. We call it the old Bishop's Church. It was built somewhere towards the end of the 4th century. And what you can see here are the remains of the original mosaic. You can see different fields with different patterns, which are donations from different people. The patterns are repetitive from a city to a city. The craftsmen or the artisans who were doing the mosaics would have had these patterns and then they would do it. The artisans, they can do the mosaic in one place and travel to another and do it again. How to get to Stobi? Well, there are a couple of ways to, to get to Stobi because Stobi is really easily approachable. First of all, we are located at the E75 highway which is the corridor that connects the north and the south of, of Europe. So everybody who goes to Greece has to pass by Stobi, so you can stop here. Also, we have a train station here at Stobi. We have also the, the railroad going from north of the Balkans to the south of the Balkans. Uh, the best ways that people use is to get by plane to Thessaloniki or to, to Skopje. From Skopje, you can get to Stobi for 45 minutes, 40 minutes by car after that. Or from Thessaloniki, this time would be double around an hour, hour and 20 minutes. Stobi is located uh, along the Varda Valley, but at the same time is located in what is called the Tikves Valley. And it's the most famous wine region in Macedonia. It has long tradition of, of growing wines. So there are plenty of wineries right here. One of the biggest wineries in Macedonia is the Stobi Winery, located just five kilometers to the north. There is another winery that we have only 250 meters from the site, the Lazar Winery. And then we have the Kavadarci, a famous town in ex-Yugoslavia and in Macedonia for the wine, where we have the largest Tikvish winery. And there are also plenty, many other smaller or larger wineries in the area. So there's plenty to do and plenty to consume here. Many of the wineries besides wine tasting, they offer food and even uh, accommodation. So a person can have some good time, good time here. My favorite wine is uh, Rosia Fortuna. It's a new wine uh, who uh, makes Lazar. Uh, Lazar is our enologist and uh, he makes the, our wines. Now we stayed in a new, our new vineyard. Uh, this is the Temjanica. <laughs> Bitola is a city with a rich history. First uh, writing documents was from the Middle Age. It's a city with a big cultural tradition. This street is the downtown of the city. We have uh, here the houses of most uh, popular uh, Bitola citizens. We have a uh, modern living in the 19th century. And for other side, we have a uh, rural living in the city. This is the house of Milton Manaki. Milton Manaki is the first uh, cinematographer on the Balkan Peninsula. This uh, street is the street of the boutiques for tourism, street of consuls. In 19th century, every bigger country in Europe has uh, our own consuls in this city. Bitola for we is the best city in the world. I've been in the Europe and Africa and Asia, but Bitola have a, a little smell which is very, very characteristic. Uh, gastronomy is a different. We have a traditional Macedonian food, traditional Turkish food, and in the new restaurants we have a traditional European. For every tourist, we have something. Heraklea Linkesis is founded from the Macedonian king, Philip II of Macedonia, in the middle of the 4th century BC. We have uh, buildings from the Roman period, streets from the late antique mm -hmm. period, basilicas uh, from the early Christianity period. This is the original. Is we have a very complicated system in city from the water. We have the statue of Nemeza, the goddess of uh, faith and justice. We think that is the first Christian basilica in the city from the 4th century, in the time when the 
Christianity is not a legal religion. We have 1,300 square meters mosaics in Heraklea. We will uh, open mosaics for one month. For the summer season? Yes, for the summer season. We have uh, this uh, for water, for dirty water. Okay. And this canal come from the uh, square before theater. It's a Roman type of theater. It's uh, built in the time of the Imperial Hadrian and finished for the Imperial Antonius Pius. What would be the main difference between the Greek and okay. the Roman theater? First, Greek theater, the seats uh, go to down. In Roman period, we have uh, the fence, metal fence here, for the protect for the visitors from the animals. And this theater is uh, a theater for the Venators games, not gladiators. Venators games is the games with the people and uh, animals. animals. And animals. And for poetry, poetry, tragedy, for the uh, sense uh, presentation. Ohrid and the whole surrounding, including the lake, are uh, inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Of course, it is inscribed because of its beautiful and really breathtaking natural setting, but it's also uh, inscribed as a cultural heritage exactly because of the city of Ohrid, ancient uh, Lichnidos, which is actually preserving the various layers of the different cultures and civilization which set foot, so to speak, here, starting from the Illyrian tribes, uh, followed with the Macedonian Hellenic uh, kingdom, uh, with Romans and later uh, with Byzantium and the Ottoman. This was a rich and prosperous trade center. Later, it became a very important early Christian Episcopal center. This place has amazing acoustic. Old name of Ohrid is Lichnidos, city of light in Greek language. Fantastic place and rich with uh, history, history of art and archaeology and spirituality. Because uh, North Macedonia today is situated in old Roman road via Ignatia, built by Roman Empire in 2nd century BC, we have riches of this archaeology in this place, Plaušnik. Plaušnik means flat space on the top of the hill. And here in this place, we have from archaeological site three early Christian basilica from the same period with two baptistery, 5th century AD. So big baptistery behind my back and small baptistery. In this uh, beautiful uh, archaeological complex with name Plaušnik, we have one big beautiful uh, church with name Polyconchal Basilica. In entrance, we have beautiful small baptistery where you can see beautiful mosaic with beautiful representation with name Fontana de la Vita, Fountain of Life. How do you imagine that time? In that time, actually, I will enjoy it because uh, of beautiful, uh, clever people with very, very smart brains, with uh, very uh, small five fingers, able to make something uh, um, eternal. We are from Ohrid and currently relaxing on the lakeshore. Usually every Ohrid citizen which has uh, some passion for this city usually takes a stroll, especially when the weather is sunny and enjoys the beauties of, of the lake. The Ohrid Lake is one of the oldest lakes in the Europe. There is actually a lake on, on the Titan, on the moon of uh, Saturn, named after Ohrid Lake and it's named also Ohrid Lake. We are currently working in Skopje, but we do not miss the opportunity to visit our hometown whenever it's possible. So for me, Ohrid is a place where I can find my tranquility and relax and just free my mind from day-to-day -day stress, activities, problems. There are plenty of endemic species over here living in the lake, like the Pastramka, the Ohridska Pastramka we named it. There is a saying that uh, there is a church for every day of the year here. 365 churches for every saint and for every day. That's why it's called the Balkan Jerusalem. There is a lot of history here about it. In all the other places on the earth, people do 90% of the stuff. In Ohrid, God has made 90% of the stuff. 10% is from people. So that's why this for me is the place that I will try to never leave. Peacefully and wherever I go and whatever, whichever city I visit, 
I always say that my hometown is the most beautiful city that I've ever been.